Hello, I'm James Clark from King's College London, and in this brief walkthrough, I'm going to show you how to undertake the steps needed to do a repeated measure one way ANOVA in GraphPad Prism. A one way ANOVA is the statistical test required to compare three or more groups of data. Under some circumstances, however, you may find that your groups are related in such a way that allows a repeated measures ANOVA. On the screen, you can see data from seven participants where we measured heart rate at resting and then after three and six minutes of exercise. These data are shown tabulated and we can view these as a graph in the graphs tab. You can see from these data that the average resting heart rate in our group was around about 60 beats a minute. However, following exercise, this average rose to above 100 beats a minute, and then following 6 minutes of exercise at 100 watts, this heart rate rose to around 115 beats a minute. These data are repeated measures. In other words, if we look at the data table, line number 1 represents subject number 1. The heart rate was measured at three different occasions in the same subject. Therefore, we are repeating measures within one subject. Line 2 represents subject 2, and line 3 to 7 represents subjects 3 to 7. These data as they stand are anonymized. There is no way of knowing who subject 1 is or who subject 7 is. A useful feature in GraphPad Prism is the ability to add row titles to a table. You can do this by clicking on the tool here and selecting Show Row Titles from the Format Data Table box. Upon clicking OK, a series of titles will appear down the left-hand side of your table. You can now enter the subject information into the table. Now, if we look at these data as a standard bar graph, you notice that the difference between 3 and 6 minutes is actually very small numerically. However, if we show these data as a before and after plot, you will notice that the between 3 and 6 minutes, every subject showed an increase in heart rate without fail. Since this is a repeated measures study, this actually improves the power of our analysis. And if every subject did increase between 3 and 6 minutes, for instance, a repeated measures ANOVA would be able to test whether this is a significant increase or whether the increase was random. So we're going to carry out a repeated measures one way ANOVA on these data. We can do this by clicking on the Analyze button on the Analysis toolbar from a graph. We can click on the Analyze button on the Analysis toolbar from within a table. Or we can click on New Analysis from the Results pane on the left hand side. For this demonstration, we're going to click on Analyze from the table data. This brings up the Analyze Data Options window, and we want to select One Way ANOVA from the Column Analyses section of the left hand side as part of the built in analysis of GraphPad Prism. We can select the groups we wish to analyze on the right hand side, and in this case, we want to analyze all the groups resting, three minutes, and six minutes of exercise. Once we have selected these data, we click OK. We will then bring up the parameters window as part of the one way ANOVA analysis. The parameters window is divided into five sections experimental design, repeated measures, multiple comparisons, options, and residuals. In the experimental design window, we get to tell Prism whether these are a repeated measures or there is no matching or pairing. Since we know that these data are repeated measures, we click on the second option where each row represents the matched or repeated measures data. Do make sure though that your subject data are organized correctly on your table and that for instance subject 1 occupies row 1, subject 2 always occupies row 2, etc. Once we have selected that each row represents a matched or repeated measures data, we then can assume Gaussian distribution 
My data set only consists of an N of 7, and if I ran a normality test on this, it would not be capable of calculating whether these are normally distributed or not. So for the purposes of this, I will assume Gaussian distribution and carry out a parametric test. Prism gives you some helpful hints from time to time, and you can see in the Assume Sphericity option, it has said no, use this greenhouse correction. This is a recommended function, and I certainly advise you follow the recommendations. Since we have selected that these are repeated measures, we now have an option in the repeated measures box to decide what kind of repeated measures analysis we wish to undertake. For those who have used version 7 of PRISM and earlier, you can select the standard repeated measures ANOVA. We also in version 8 of PRISM have a mixed effects model which allows for missing values. However, if you're not sure, you can click on the It Depends option and PRISM will make that decision for you when it does the analysis. Now we need to look at multiple comparisons. If we wish to see the differences between our three groups, we need to select multiple comparisons. Otherwise, PRISM will merely report the ANOVA results and tell us whether there is an effect or not. We want to know where that effect is, so we must compare columns. The most popular option is the second option in terms of follow-up or post hoc tests. And that would be to compare the mean of each column with the mean of every other column. This means that we will get comparisons between baseline and our first time point, baseline and our second time point, but also comparators between our first and second time point. In other words, in our experiment, does the heart rate increase further under further exercise? We could just compare the means of each column against a control column, or in our case against our resting heart rate column, or we can select which columns we wish to do. I am going to choose compare the mean of each column with the mean of every other column, since that is the question I'm asking. The fourth tab is the options tab, and here we get to choose which multiple comparisons post hoc test the software carries out. You can choose from the drop down list. Here we have a choice of Tukey, Bonferroni, Sidak, Holm Sidak, and Newman Cools. Newman Cools is not recommended. However, Tukey is recommended. For most biomedical scientists, Tukey or Bonferroni are the two most commonly selected statistical post hoc tests. If you're not sure what these tests are doing or how they work, you can use the little question mark down the bottom left hand side of the parameters window and PRISM's very helpful help file will appear on the screen and you can then read more about these tests. For most cases, the multiple comparisons option, graphing options, additional results and output windows can be left in their default settings. You have an option in window number five to select the plotting of a residuals plot if you wish to know how your data differs from the predicted data. We're not going to do this, and we're just going to check to make sure we are doing a two key postdoc comparison, that we're comparing every column with each other, and that we have selected a repeated measures experimental design. Once we have selected the settings we wish, we can click on the OK button. The first window that will appear are the results of your one-way repeated measures ANOVA. And you can see on the screen that the F value and P value is reported, as well as a P value summary. And this is telling us that there is an effect in our experiment and that there is a difference, and this is significant. We can then look through and see some of the other results of our ANOVA table. And down the bottom, we can see a summary of our data, reporting that we have three columns, seven numbers, and no missing values. Once you are satisfied that your data have passed an ANOVA test, you can then look at your multi-comparisons. By clicking on the second tab within the results window, we can now see the summary results of our multiple comparisons test. Focusing mainly on the second paragraph of text, where we report the two key multiple comparisons, we can see that there is a difference between resting and three minutes, and this is significant to less than 0.001. We can see also there is a significant difference between resting and six minutes, which is also highly significant. We also can note that this small increase from three minutes to six minutes with a repeated measures test 
is statistically significant. In other words, because all of the subjects also showed an increase after three minutes to six minutes, this data is considered significant in the context of a repeated measures and over test. We can, of course, use these data now to annotate our graph. We can go back to our one-way ANOVA graph, and we could report on our graph that three minutes and six minutes is significantly higher than resting. And we could also report, perhaps using a different symbol, that three minutes and six minutes are also significantly different from each other. It is worth noting that if we were to carry out a one-way ANOVA without repeated measures on these data, in other words, no assumptions are being made about each subject being on its own line and that this is a mixed data set. There is no difference between the three minute and six minute time points. So this now shows us how to do a one way ANOVA with repeated measures on a sample data set.